When a man turns to religion, it can turn him into either a creature of hell or a creature of heaven. Let me explain what I mean. Every man and woman is inwardly a city in which there are many factions, one gaining the upper hand today, another tomorrow. The only people in whom this warfare of the factions is appeased are, on the one hand, the saints, those wholly integrated beings who have brought all such contrary forces under the control of the highest principle, and on the other, those who have surrendered entirely to the most powerful and brutal factions in their makeup and so enjoy an illusion of peace worse than any warfare. Between these two extremes lies a battlefield. The fact that there are many people who live quiet lives of routine, looking neither to the right nor to the left, neither upwards towards the heavens nor downwards into the abyss, is misleading, for there are forces lurking within everyone which may remain dormant so long as no great prize is within reach or so long as no great danger threatens. When a man turns to religion, these forces are awakened, whether for good or ill, and, if for ill, may try to seize hold of it and use it for their own purposes. No ego is more inflated than the one who feeds upon religion and justifies its greed and fury in religious terms. It can even happen that the inhibitions which restrain murderous impulses in those who live only for this world are released when the opportunity arises to murder in the name of God. Those who seek paradise walk a tightrope over hell. The greater the prize, the greater the risk. But light is light. By its very nature it shows up things we might prefer to keep hidden. It reveals and exposes, as does that judgment to which we must all finally submit. The agnostic has a very curious notion of religion. He is convinced that when a man says, I believe in God, he should at once become perfect. If this does not happen, then the believer must be a fraud and a hypocrite. He thinks that adherence to a religion is the end of the road, whereas it is in fact only the beginning of a very long and sometimes very rough road. He looks for consistency in religious people, however aware he may be of the inconsistencies in himself. The fact that we do expect consistency of others and are astonished by their lack of it is sufficient proof that our awareness that the human personality ought to be unified under one command. Perhaps the most difficult of all the requirements of religion is simplicity. For the simple man is all of one piece. He does not leave bits of himself scattered all over the landscape of his life. He is, so to speak, the same all through, whichever way you slice him. And it has been said that only the saint has a right to say, I. The rest of us would do better to confess, my name is Legion. This inward multiplicity, the multiplicity of the factions, is like an echo within the human personality of outward polytheism. On the one hand, many persons within a single envelope of flesh. On the other, many gods in a fragmented universe. Monotheism is not only a theology, it is also a psychology, as is the Shahada, La ilaha illallah. And that is a reading from Islam and the Destiny of Man by Guy Eaton, pages 73 to 74. Till next time.